what are the different ways you think AGI might go wrong that concern you? You said that uh, fear, a little bit of fear is very appropriate here. He's, you've been very transparent about being mostly excited, but also scared. I think it's weird when people like think it's like a big dunk that I say like, I'm a little bit afraid. And I think it'd be crazy not to be a little bit afraid. And I empathize with people who are a lot afraid. What do you think about that moment of a system becoming super intelligent? Do you think you would know? The current worries that I have are that there are going to be disinformation problems or economic shocks or something else at a level far beyond anything we're prepared for. And that doesn't require super intelligence. That doesn't require a super deep alignment problem in the machine waking up and trying to deceive us. And I don't think that gets enough attention. I mean, it's starting to get more, I guess. So these systems deployed at scale can uh, shift the winds of geopolitics and so on. How would we know if like on Twitter, we were mostly having like LLMs direct the whatever's flowing through that hive mind. Yeah, on Twitter and then perhaps beyond. And then as on Twitter, so everywhere else eventually. Yeah, how would we know? My statement is we wouldn't. And that's a real danger. How do you prevent that danger? I think there's a lot of things you can try. Um, but at this point, it is a certainty there are soon going to be a lot of capable open source LLMs with very few to none, no safety controls on them. And so you can try with regulatory approaches. You can try with using more powerful AIs to detect this stuff happening. Um, I'd like us to start trying a lot of things very soon. How do you, under this pressure that there's going to be a lot of open source, there's going to be a, a lot of large language models, under this pressure, how do you continue prioritizing safety? Versus, um, I mean, there's several pressures. So one of them is a market-driven pressure from uh, other companies, uh, Google, Apple, Meta, and smaller companies. How do you resist the pressure from that? Or how do you navigate that pressure? You stick with what you believe in, you stick to your mission. You know, I'm sure people will get ahead of us in all sorts of ways and take shortcuts we're not gonna take. Um, and we just aren't gonna do that. How do you uh, compete them? I think there's going to be many AGIs in the world, so we don't have to like outcompete everyone. We're going to contribute one. Other people are going to contribute some. I think up. I think multiple AGIs in the world with some differences in how they're built and what they do and what they're focused on. I think that's good. Um, we have a very unusual structure, so we don't have this incentive to capture unlimited value. I worry about the people who do, but you know, hopefully it's all gonna work out. But we're a weird org and we're good at resisting pressure. Like we have been a misunderstood and badly mocked org for a long time. Like when we started, we like announced the org at the end of 2015 and said we were gonna work on AGI. Like people thought we were batshit insane. Yeah. You know, like I, I, <laughs> I remember at the time a uh, eminent AI scientist at a large industrial AI lab was like DMing individual reporters being like, you know, these people aren't very good and it's ridiculous to talk about AGI and I can't believe you're giving them time of day. And it's like, that was the level of like pettiness and rancor in the field at a new group of people saying, we're gonna try to build AGI. So OpenAI and DeepMind was a small collection of folks who were brave enough to talk about AGI um, in the face of mockery. We don't get mocked as much now. Don't get mocked as much now.